when the state Liberals voted to debate nuclear power's potential to cut carbon emissions. But with Labor demanding debate be shut down and the Liberal leader saying the vote wasn't binding, discussion seems doomed. But while the politicians won't debate, others will, with some senior academics deciding the future depends on nuclear power. Mike Sexton reports. Australians are using more and more electricity, most of it created by coal generators that emit carbon. In simple terms, most scientists believe the more air conditioners in use, the hotter the planet gets. That obviously leads you to consider well, what are the possible solutions. I mean, we can look at adaptation to climate change, but ultimately we've got to stop the process from running out of control. Professor Barry Brook is director of the Research Institute for Climate Change and Sustainability at the University of Adelaide. He's run his slide rule over the options Australia has for generating electricity while reducing emissions and believes despite the abundance of wind, sunshine and hot rocks, renewable energy will not power us through the 21st century. Looking hard at renewable energy, there are a lot of limitations, especially in terms of energy storage and energy backup, that make it extraordinarily implausible, according to my view and that of many others, that it could supply most of our power needs in the future, which, for someone who's really concerned about climate change impacts, is a pretty disappointing conclusion. Which is why Professor Brook believes the answer lies in that other abundant South Australian resource, uranium. We need to find a technology that has the characteristics of coal that is cheaper than coal. Nuclear power, especially fourth generation nuclear power, offers that prospect. Now if we can't find, develop, commercialise and uh, deploy on a large scale that sort of technology, I think we have a very slim chance of avoiding major climate change impacts. Nuclear is first far too slow and far too expensive. It would be the least effective option for Australia to look to in terms of addressing climate change and greenhouse gas emission issues. We are now on the path toward a renewable energy future. Barry Brook isn't alone in his view. Others such as Tim Flannery agree with him. But the opinion has opened a divide among the environmental movement comparable to the one among scientists who are climate change believers or sceptics. David Noonan from the Australian Conservation Foundation has long campaigned against nuclear power and uranium mining and believes he represents the views of most environmentalists. Have you seen a shift in this debate? No, I haven't in the sense that there is no environment group, state, national or international, that's supporting nuclear power. Some individuals have expressed a view, uh, but that's not reflected by the environment movement. CBS News. An accident at a nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania has triggered a condition of general emergency. Opponents of nuclear power point to the catastrophes at Three Mile Island and Chernobyl as reasons why the technology shouldn't be used. When Chernobyl's fourth reactor shot out fuel containing plutonium. But proponents argue those plants were so-called first and second generation reactors and that new technologies make repeats unlikely. Each new generation of reactor is becoming more efficient cheaper, safer and easier to maintain. And this trend will likely continue. It's a bit like, to take an analogy, comparing the A380 aircraft to the Hindenburg and saying, well, Hindenburg blew up in 1933, therefore aviation is an inherently unsafe technology and we shouldn't pursue it. I mean, technologies move on, people learn from their mistakes. While Australia has no plans for nuclear power, according to the Australian Uranium Association, 50 other countries do. And that's on top of the 31 countries that already have reactors. We had some economic research done for us a year or so ago, and that showed that an increase in demand for nuclear power using some fairly conservative assumptions uh, would increase demand for Australia's uranium to somewhere between 30 and 40,000 tonnes a year. And that's three to four times what we currently export. And you put that together with the expansion of Australia's, of South Australia's uranium industry and there's a very significant opportunity there for South Australia. At the moment, nuclear power stations don't just use what is mined in South Australia. Unlike coal, which is mined and used in a power plant, unprocessed uranium, known as yellow cake, has to be enriched overseas, with only about 3% of it ending up as fuel rods. Some in business believe Australia should build an enrichment plant to value add to the uranium export. But the industry itself says for a number of reasons, including security, that's unlikely. Most of the world's thinking these days about enrichment, in fact, is not to spread it around further, uh, but to concentrate it. Many planned new reactors are so-called third-generation models which last longer and are more efficient. 
But Barry Brooks says the revolution he hopes will help cool the planet will come from so-called fourth-generation nuclear power plants, which are still a theory as one is yet to be built. This is the technology of the future, and it solves a lot of other problems that are currently associated with nuclear power. One of the biggest is we've, well, we've generated all of this nuclear waste in the form of spent fuel that we have to manage for 100,000 years. Well, a rather neat thing about the new technology, which is called Generation 4 nuclear power, is that it takes that waste and uses that as fuel. Generation 4 reactors would also run on mined rather than enriched uranium, of which there's a global stockpile. So if they would come online, the need for yellow cake would diminish dramatically. Uh, first we have to go through Generation 3 technology and uh, as far as we can see ahead at the moment, the demand for uranium, uh, and, uh, um, consequent upon the demand for nuclear power, uh, makes the outlook for our industry, uh, uh, our industry very, uh, very good. David Noonan believes there are security concerns about Generation 4 reactors because they produce and use plutonium, which is also the principal ingredient in nuclear weapons. These are breeder reactors, they produce plutonium and that maximises the risks of weapons and of nuclear proliferation. And we can't be proposing to address uh, the hazards of climate change by introducing and relying on the risks in nuclear weaponry. Whether Australia ever embraces nuclear power remains to be seen, but the debate at least is generating plenty of heat. At nearly 90, most of us aren't thinking about work, but after a lifetime of outstanding research into osteoporosis,